name is Michael Road. Michael Road, yes. And you had a bout with... Uh, Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Lymphoma. Yeah. And could you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. It's, a, it's cancer of your lymph system. It was attributed to being exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam. I, in 1984, I was diagnosed with it. And uh, I was treated with chemotherapy, of which the the chemotherapy made me extremely ill. But to begin with, uh, the first thing we did was pray and go to my church and have the staff pray for me. And we, we also continued to pray and surround ourselves and myself, especially with, uh, with healing testimonies and healing scriptures and, and healing tapes and healing books, books on healing. And we just did everything we could to, to fight the battle and trust in God to do it. We prayed for a special gift of faith, and I know that I received that through the whole battle, and was because I believed right from day one that I was going to be healed. Uh, began treatment in August of 84. I uh, went on a raw veggies and raw fruit diet. I had had one chemotherapy treatment. Uh, I was extremely violently sick and felt that God wasn't leading me in that direction for healing, that he wanted to use some other method of healing. Uh, we tried a, a raw veggies and raw fruit diet, where I ate nothing but that for seven eight or eight months until May of 85 when I finally went down and to a clinic in San Diego and, and went through some immunology and some immunizations and some special treatments of high doses of, uh, of calcium and vitamin C and, and high vitamins. Did During the time you were doing all the raw uh, fruits and vegetables, didn't your lymphoma seem to get worse or better or stay about the same? It, it seemed like it stayed about the same within my body. I never really felt ill through that time. But the tumor grew from the size of about a quarter on my leg, looked like a little bruise, to about the size of a softball. Oh. It was huge. And, uh, and so they finally told me in, that I had to have it cut out, that it wasn't going to shrink. Uh, we were taking wheatgrass and, and I was drinking one to two ounces of wheatgrass three times a day and then taking the the wheatgrass itself and using it as a as a poultice a, a, a compress on the on the tumor trying to get the tumor to shrink uh, after returning from San Diego and having the having the the tumor excised I was told that they had completely gotten the, the cancer but you know with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma it's in your lymph system so it's pretty tough to believe that they got it just from cutting a tumor out. Well in August it came back bigger and stronger and more rapid and the tumor began to grow extremely quickly on my leg for example. Uh, they told me I couldn't wait for chemotherapy I had to start right now. Mm -hmm. I went home and my wife and I got down on the floor and prayed and asked God to honor his number seven as completeness uh, using the example of uh, the Syrian Naaman who was told to go dunk in the River Jordan seven times to to be healed of, uh, of leprosy and so we use that as our example and ask God to, to honor that number seven. On the seventh chemotherapy treatment the chemotherapy started eating through the blood vessels in my arm and ate into the muscle and caused gangrene to set in. Right. Uh, during that, that, right after that seventh chemotherapy treatment, Diane went to church. We hadn't been to church in several months. I looked horrible. My hair was gone. My skin was all real gray. I looked like I was 70 or 80 years old, and I was, I was 40. And I, I, I looked like I was dying. So this one Wednesday night, Diane went to church, and she hadn't been to church for quite a while because she didn't want to answer questions, you know, and so forth. It just got real old, and, and so this one Wednesday night, she walked in late. Worship service had already gone on. They had a guest speaker as one of our elders was speaking instead of our pastor, and he was talking about the toughest times in his life. And he had found that when it got the darkest, and if he could trust through it all, that Jesus answered and did things. That was all Diane needed to hear. She came rushing home and told me. We started laughing. 
We were praying and rejoicing and laughing on the floor so bad that we didn't couldn't control our laughter. Well, the next day I was to go in for my eighth chemotherapy treatment. Remember, we had asked mm -hmm. God to honor seven. Well, I went into the doctor's office. I had to walk in with my arm like this because every time it went down below here, it was an extreme pain because my whole forearm was full of gangrene. I didn't know what it was at the time. It was just solid black. And the, I went into the doctor's office like this and said, Doctor, my arm is so hurt, hurting so bad, I can't have chemotherapy anymore. And he looked at my arm and his eyes got big. He shut his office to research what had happened to my arm. And then he pumped my arm full of steroids to take away the pain and sent me to a, a plastic surgeon. Hmm. The plastic surgeon looked at my arm and said, we're going to have to take that whole forearm muscle and maybe the whole forearm from the elbow down. This was on a Thursday hmm. or Friday. Well, at any rate, they, he set me up to go into the hospital the following Tuesday and have the surgery done on Wednesday. You can see the arm's normal. It is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I asked the doctor to take a biopsy of the cancer. He said, no, it's too early. It, you're, not, you're a long ways from being completed with the chemotherapy treatments, and you're supposed to have radiation treatments also. I said, no, take a sample of the biopsy. He took a sample. Monday morning, when I awakened, I got up to go do the things that a person does in the morning, shaving and so forth. And Diane awoke and saw me and got scared. My face had turned black. Wow. And she was started praying, and then she heard me all of a sudden in the bathroom start hallelujahing and rejoicing. And I came out and said, look at this, look at this. What it was, I had five o'clock shadows so thick, and I hadn't had hair, you know, for months. But it all came in at once and so thick that uh, I just knew that I was healed. About 10 o'clock that morning, we got a call from the doctor's office saying I had to come down to take tests again because the, the, something went, was wrong with the other test. Hmm. <laughs> it said that uh, they couldn't find any cancer, so I had to have the test. And we said, nope, I'm healed. Well, went to the plastic surgeon. My arm is like you saw it just a minute ago. At that point, never had any more chemotherapy. Never had the 16 radiation treatments I was supposed to have. Uh, 26 radiation treatments. The balance of the chemotherapy was to be 16 total treatments. And that was Dece on November 7th, 1985. Uh, God healed me. Wow. Mighty miracle at that time. Amazing. Amazing, is right. How many people had lymph lymphoma like you had and, and actually got uh, over it even with the treatments? I, I really don't know, except that when I left Santa Barbara County to move up here in 93, I had gone to the VA clinic in Santa Barbara for just uh, my annual checkup or every six-month checkup. They, they wanted to keep in touch with me because of the exposure to Agent Orange and mm -hmm. because of the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And at that time, they told me I was the only guy in the entire county in the VA office that had had nine Hodgkin's lymphoma from exposure to Agent Orange and survived. So I don't know how many people that was, but it had to be quite a few. In 1986, before the Chernobyl event, I was uh, healthy uh, in my body. I was working as a fireman. And after this event, after this case, I was uh, brought down there in the separate division of firemen of USSR. And our job was to, just to, uh, to quench the fire in the th uh, third and the fourth block. And we were quenching the fire in 30 kilometers, uh, 30, uh, 30 kilometers, in a zone of th 30 kilometers around. It, it was a dead zone, see? And I could tell you many, many things there. 
но не это главное. But it's not the main thing. Я хочу показать Божью милость. I would like to show God's mercy in that. До Чернобыля я не знал Бога. Before Chernobyl I didn't know God. Ну сердце мое искало его. But my heart was seeking after him. Я относился просто к традиционной православной церкви, существующей моей. And my attitude was just a regular attitude to orthodox traditional church that we've got. И когда после ликвидации последствий аварии, and after this event has happened, я начал болеть. I started got I got sick. И меня направляли от одного до другого стационара Украины. And I was directed from one hospital to another in Ukraine. И лучшие врачи говорили, что он не имеет надежды. And the best doctors said that he has no hope to live. Так как у меня появилось около 15 болезней. Because I had 15 diseases appeared in my body. Больше половины из которых хронические. And the most half of them was chronic, so it was in my body for all the time. В том числе заболевания крови. And also the leukemia. И не вливали кровь в вену в руке. They poured the injected the blood into my hand. А сосуды лопали, и она все равно. And the the vessels broke was broken down and it just poured it out. All around. Я любил жизнь. I loved to live. I loved life. Заглянул с больничной койки на небо. When I looked up from the window there in the hospital room. Я никогда в жизни не читал Евангелие. Not one time in my life I read a gospel. Ведь у нас это было запрещено. Because it was forbidden here. Я просто сказал, как мог. And I just said, just as I could, do it. Но все это but everything was coming out of my heart. If I will stay alive, then I will proclaim about it to everybody. But if I have to have to go through the torments, then it's better for me to die. I was only 32 years old. И Бог оставил меня жить. And God has given me a life to live. Несмотря что я даже не мог ходить, вставать с постели, мне не разрешали врачи. In spite of all this, that I couldn't even walk, the doctors was forbidden me to walk. А мы вопияли Господу. And we were crying out to God. Чтобы Он показал истину. That He would show us the the path of truth. И Господь. And the Lord. Повел меня к одному брату, has directed me to one brother, который только что получил с бандероли, that just recently received, пророк Бранхам Южной Африки, a parcel with the book Prophet visits South Africa. Я говорю, прочитай, брат. And I said, you read, you read, my brother, and then you you give it to me. Он нет, бери. And he he said, no, take it. Я взял. And I've taken it. Тот брат через два дня умер. That brother had died two years later. Но у меня уже был адрес. But now I had an address. И так я написал. And so I wrote down the letter to them. И стал получать послания. And I started receiving the message, getting the message books. И стал жить. And I started living by it. И я от всего в мире откажусь, но от этого я не могу. And now we refuse everything in the world but this. Because it's God. It's it's life. That's mercy. And science shows. Более двенадцати с половиной тысяч болезней. The more than twelve thousand kinds of diseases that appeared after that. А человеку достаточно одной болезни, чтобы он умер. And it is enough for the man to have one disease to die. Человеку достаточно девять грамм, чтобы его убили пули. The man has enough. It's enough to have five nine ounces of. It's it's a weight of a bullet or or something to kill him. А Бог показал. And but God showed. Что даже если атомная бомба взорвется. That if even the atomic bomb will will explode. Или любая болезнь. Or any disease. Он проведет. He will take us through. And the people are cursing Chernobyl. 
But I thank God for Chernobyl. Ch Ch Chernobyl in the, in the earth is not so horrible, but the Chernobyl in the hearts of the people. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So what was it like the first time that you walked into Chernobyl? What did you see? I've seen everything was dead. Not one bird. Just dead silence. The pine trees were red. It's impossible to describe. Did, did they tell you before you went in there what was going to happen to you? No. Before they directed us to that place, they held us four days under the guard. Uh, we had 35 guards that were skipping us with, the, uh, with their dogs and with machine guns and with guns. And that's all. And they were forcing us to sign a, a paper that your free will, that you have free will of going there. And they said that the, the uh, task of the government has to be fulfilled. If you would do something wrong, then we will rotten you down anyway. And uh, 259 people, they won't, uh, they won't notice it, that they're dead that they disappeared. That's, that was our division. Uh, I was the only one fireman from uh, Kosovo, uh, area. So they the taken the one person out of the place so that we wouldn't know each other, see? What did the doctor say the first time that he seen you after you came out of Chernobyl? А что врачи сказали, когда ты только пришел из Чернобыля, приехал из Чернобыля? Они просто ложили в больницу. They were just taking me to the hospital. Оказывали помощь. They were helping me. Но когда врач районный написал but when the doctors of the dairy had, they had signed the paper that it was a radiation disease and I was directed to the area hospital. Oh, I don't know what it is. Problem with the teeth. So it was a general weakness, just a weakness in the body. That's what they said. It was, uh, it, it was forbidden even at that, at that time to, to say it was a radiation disease. And also to connect the disease with the Chernobyl's uh, event. What did you feel like in your heart the very first time you realized that to walk into Chernobyl was going to be death? А как ты себя почувствовал, что в своем сердце, что когда ты идешь в Чернобыль, ты идешь на смерть? Что ты чувствовал в сердце? Я просто стал на колени. I just knelt down. И как мог? And just as hard as I could. Помоги мне. I said, God, help me to go through that. That was all of it. I knew where I was going to. That's all. I was just crying out like this, and that's all. Is your doctor still alive that, that talked to you after you came out? А твои врачи по-прежнему живы, которые разговаривали с тобой после того, как ты приехал с Чернобыля? Some doctors that told me that, that there is no hope to live, they are already dead. But by the mercy of God, I'm alive today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mercy. The next miracle took place in Lima, Ohio, when our pastor prayed for an old man that had been in a wheelchair for years, and God permanently healed him. God, we have seen people totally paralyzed, people that could not walk at all, 
rise out of their wheelchairs and walk in the name of the Lord Jesus within two or three days of being prayed for and never have to go back to those wheelchairs again. Oh, hallelujah. God, give my brother such a miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not just the power to rise out of this, God, and to walk in the name of Jesus Christ, but the power to continue to walk free from this mechanism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give him a permanent miracle, God, one that the Satan cannot come and rob and take away from him, Lord God. God, put that kind of faith in his heart, God, to walk free from this thing and to stay free of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory be to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We're never too old to receive a miracle. See, I've been home. I got a prayer closet and I got an altar in there, but I couldn't kneel down. And just the other morning, I knelt down and I tried to get up. And it took me about 15, 20 minutes before I could get up on my feet. And I was really hurting. But now, praise the Lord, I can go in there, Hallelujah. close my closet door. The Cowboy Church temporarily meets at the livestock auction south of Junction City. God, you said that you're a God who heals. You said in your word that you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You said, by your stripes, I'm healed. And I stood on that book. And I said, I'm standing on it. I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to receive it. And that night, my healing came.
life that I would have never got famous. So tonight I'm giving my life and my son's life to my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I've been through a lot in my life, over 22 years of drugs and alcohol, and I have almost 11 months clean and sober now. We're going to bury that person that you just uh, talked about, witness to, that drug addict, and all that. We're going to bury it in the grave of Jesus. Raise you up in the newness of life, and call out to Jesus the rest of your days. Amen. Amen. You little know, so you don't get water, send it to that day in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I understand more so with these girls about clean time. Now, if you haven't been there and don't have that habit, you will never understand what a habit can do to you. It mentally screws you, it mentally messes you up physically, emotionally. You have not gone too far, man. Amen. Amen. God will take you where you are. Not where you've been. Where you are. Amen. I still believe there's somebody else here tonight. We're not going to make fun of you. We're not going to laugh at you tonight. Every one of us in here started right at the same spot. We had to say yes to Jesus. Is it, is that, I just feel like Terry in here just a little bit. For someone. God, God has been dealing with you. Amen. But I want to tell you, just your footsteps down the stairs is all Jesus was looking for. And I say, He sees you right now. You can your name. You can pray that prayer. Isn't it wonderful the things Jesus is doing? You know, if He's done something special for you or someone you know, call me or this station, and maybe we may make a regular program out of this.